Hello there. This is your big haired host of the Hobbyplex Show podcast and, of course, our YouTube channel here. Um, I don't know what kind of intro that was, but, anyways, uh, it is time once again for our annual uh, spring race, the 110 Scale Spring Championship, sponsored by ProTech RC. Uh, this is the two 2024 version. Um, ProTech has been the title sponsor of this specific race uh, since 2021, I think. 21? Uh, we were going to do it in 2020, but, you know, things happened. Um, anyways, uh, I've had a broken phone for a week and a half, and I do most of my videos using my phone. So, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get any video of um, the final touches being put on our track. Uh, the small changes to uh, the split lane idea that I had um, that I introduced um, when we did the live stream track build a couple weeks ago. So, better late than never. I want to show you guys the track. And, uh, well, it's quiet because we're almost going to start practice here in about 45 minutes. So, um, yeah, let's go check it out. Got her painted up Tuesday, Tuesday night, and did not have a working phone until uh, yesterday. And uh, had some finishing touches to put out here last night, too. We moved some banners around. Um, got all the ProTech banners up where we needed them. Team Associated, Reedy, of course, our sponsor of our summer series. So... Um, you know, want to get those banners up too. And, uh, yeah, anyways, so right now you're, I'm kind of pointed right at the, uh, the big, the big thing for this track layout, something that, uh, I've never seen before and something I've been thinking about for a long time in doing. And that is a option split lane. Um, in theory, uh, both of these lanes here are pretty much identical. Um, you know, I tested them myself to make sure that everything kind of worked the same. There might be a preference from one person over the other. My guess is one lane will start to get used more than the other. Maybe the grip level will be up on one lane, so one lane might be faster at some point. Um, but it's kind of cool. This kind of gives you an option, like let's say uh, you're coming up behind somebody uh, that you're trying to put a lap down, and uh, they decide to go one way or the other. I don't know, just uh, this has been in my head for a long time. I've been trying to figure out how I'm gonna do it. You know, you could either maybe have like a 15 foot lane and split it in half, so your lanes end up being seven to eight feet. And then you have, um, you know, different lines through them, whether it be, let's say you've got like a one side with a triple double or one side with whoops or one side with a double triple, maybe, you know, something like that. I've seen that done before. Um, but I thought, man, I wanna make it so that they're the same. I want to make it so they're the same and you just choose whether you go right or left and then you kind of come together in the same spot. The uh, initial attempt at this was horrible. There was no flow. It was like having two different tracks in one. Um, luckily, I wasn't going to use the split lane until this race anyway, so had a couple weeks to stew about it and uh, we definitely made it uh, a lot more flowy and a lot more fun. The rest of the track um, is still there from what's been there on the live stream. We've, um, I've gone through and I've sort of adjusted uh, the jumps a little bit here and there to make them work better. Um, that corner, um, I wouldn't even call that a corner tabletop. It's just a big, hopefully a corner roller, which can kind of jump it, but um, there was a couple weird edges on it, so I went and fixed that. So, um, so that's pretty nice now. And uh, the track has had some time to, uh, to cure, I guess you could say, so. And then of course the paint, we've got it all painted up. So uh, the loops over there, so you double, then you drop in here, shoot down to here. There's a little little sharp dog leg, gotta be real careful. Um, I saw some mod four wheel guys actually sending this all the way up to the top of this turn. Two wheel drive, I haven't seen um, any do that. And then the rest of us, we're kind of jumping almost into the face of this, uh, of this hump right here. And this video is right at the moment not doing this any justice as far as elevation so um, I wanted to install a front straightaway we haven't had a front straightaway in a while um, a legit front straightaway with a big sweeper at the end with you know the last couple front straightaways have been cut off relatively early um, it is not a flat straightaway so you go you go down and then you go up and uh, just to give you the idea I don't want to put footprints on my blue yet although I think it's dry enough, it wouldn't matter. So I'm 5'11", and, uh, okay, well, I'm 5'10", but whatever. Um, you know, I'm looking right over the top of this, the top of the straightaway, and then uh, it's at my knees right over here. So kind of come up, and then you swing down, 
um, you go over this roller and then you get to choose which direction you're going to go, right or left. And you can see both of them have a hump. Um, I spaced it out so they should be spaced very, very even. And uh, then you jump up into the tabletop lander which has a little pocket almost if you're going to, for the mod guys, mod, mod two wheel, mod four wheel especially, you're going to be aiming for that little pocket on uh, both sides. Stock guys will probably land on top and then just sort of drive down into it, but yeah, it's pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, so then a little 180 um, with, a, with a little bit of a curb and then another 180 with a little bit of a curb and then you go over this double and you go up this hump over here, corner hump. Again, I'm 5'10", it's about up to my chest, so it's probably about four feet tall. And then you jump over to the loop. Now I've actually, in mod two wheel, I've been jumping almost all the way to the loop. So I've been over jumping this jump, landing flat. And then this jump was pretty difficult. I, it was weird how this jump, especially for the stock guys, was a little difficult because there's not a lot of lip on it. And so you really had to get on the gas. A lot of guys are used to scrubbing, letting off the gas before they hit the top. With this thing, you couldn't really do that. And then you drop in here and then you drop down to the main level of the track again. Right here, I love this. This is something new too. This white rubber pipe here. Um, I've been trying to find stuff that can really take a beating and to save our white pipe because, you know, the cost of everything has gone up and so um, this white pipe here, this three inch pipe has gotten expensive. It's also got a little hard to find here in the Midwest. Um, and one of the things that really kills this pipe is if you have to bend it, um, kind of like, you know, this right here. Luckily this was old pipe, so I didn't really worry about it too much. But this, this pipe right here is actually made for like, um, like saunas and uh, whirlpool, whirlpools, and it's rubber. So should hold up. The real test will be this winter, um, but it's not cheap either. But if it lasts, you know, you know, who knows if it lasts for, four or five years at least, then it'll be totally worth it. Um, I got those, I got this this rubber pipe and a lot of our 180 corners, so um, that one there, I don't know why this keeps doing that. Stop that. There we go. That one there, that one there, that one there. This one here, you can see I where it was before, I didn't like it, it was too sharp. Um, it kind of killed the flow a little bit. And of course I got them right here and because of course it's smaller so it fits inside of our three inch pipe and then um, you know I've been putting dirt alongside it to sort of keep the cars from catching the edge um, just to make their lives easier. Got the bleachers over here this time and uh, they're gonna walk around the uh, dirt oval driver stand. I made some new banner holders crowd control so you just take a bucket fill it with concrete Put in your PVC pipe. Um, the last time I built these, I put the PVC right in the middle, and I'm, and then the banners don't hang right. So I put it on the edge, so now the banners are flush and uh, the banners look really nice. So again, if you got your own track and you're having, you know, you're trying to rack your brain on how you can kind of hang banners, I did that over there too, on that side. Um, something that I wanted to show you guys too is we built this. This is gonna be a long video. Jeez. But, um, you know, right now I'm standing on where our dirt oval's at, and I don't like digging into the dirt oval because then it just makes it harder to put back in the fall when we have our dirt oval racing. And so I knew that I wanted to have this corner mound here, and I didn't want to waste dirt. Plus, it's really hard to get the tractor um, behind stuff. And so I'll show you guys. It's kind of a mess, but... So we built this wall, and we built these, these um, braces and then we, uh, we screwed them in there and then we spiked them into the actual track too to help hold this wall up and keep it straight. You know, Because a lot of times you see tracks that have wood sides and then they just sort of flop over when dirt gets put onto them. So um, this was a big deal to try to keep this nice and straight. And so far it's worked really good. So uh, in the fall, you know, I'm gonna take that down. I'll probably keep it in one piece so I can reuse it somewhere else. 
and uh, we'll have to take out all this dirt right here. But for now, that's kind of how we got that done. And uh, it's been working really well. So again, the split lane, um, I'm excited. We're gonna get some footage. Once practice starts here, I'll get some footage of the cars and show you guys that on this video coming up here in just a second. So keep with us. All right, we got TJ Williams 13.5 four-wheel drive. And uh, hopefully I don't get copyrighted with the uh, My Morning Jacket playing in the background, but I guess we'll see what happens. Sometimes it doesn't pick it up like, like it does, like I can hear it. See if he goes the other way this time. Everybody's kind of practicing, kind of deciding which way they like to go better. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> that was a good shot. Send. Oh, there's some grip over there. Let's go over there. I personally like the way that he just went. It's like a uh, my view from the vantage point, or my view from, from the driver's stand, I, I feel like I like the farther out way better. But I have been practicing going to the inside more, actually. Oh, wow. Huh. I really like, I really like how this ended up being pretty even. It's still a little saucy though too, like right where he was just at, he got a little bit of wheel spin. That's because that part of the track got really wet and it's uh, we've had a couple of wet days too, like outside, so I don't know. It'll come in even more. There you go. Oh yeah. Hey, look at that. That was beautiful. One more time. Pretty dialed. Had to get video of this. This is uh, Mike Sokalski's Team Associated B3. Not the 8th scale. The 10th scale rear motor. It's freaking dialed. That was pretty cool. Oh, oh. One more lap. Look at that thing do wheelies. That's oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah.